Um, my keys. Welcome to Still Untitled, the Adam Savage Project. I'm Will. I'm Adam. And I'm Norm. After Comic Con, I got the order all mixed up. I know. What? <laughs> I'm uh, I'm Adam. <laughs> Where am I, Madam? I'm Adam. You know, I think after all that stuff, the only thing that we broke was the the GoPro, the GoPro tripod. Oh, those always break. You guys always break. We, those. I've been using we, one for five years with no just no destruction. We we've broken a few that way. Um, yeah, it's a. Uh, it was a good. It was a good Comic Con. We talked about that already, though. We what, did. What else did you guys do after we pod? Like, I left pretty much after the podcast. I went and walked the floor with Jamie, where people were really confused. That was so much fun watching Jamie That's just so walk funny. and say, "Sure, yes, okay." That could not have gone yeah. more entertainingly. Well, so the thing that as we were going, Joey and I, when we got back, talked, and I was like, "How many people do you think thought that was just really good Jamie Heineman cosplay?" Oh, I think most people understood that it was Jamie. Oh, definitely yeah. most, but there were definitely some that were like, "Oh man, that is awesome," <laughs> and and I, I think they thought we were a bad Adam Savage and a really good Jamie Heineman. It's like oh that my John God, Travolta Sam Jackson. Wow, you were walking right next. To I was him. walking right next to him. Oh, how about the wow. Pulp Fiction dudes? Yeah, you see those guys? They were so good. Apparently, they they do this a fair bit. Yes. They've they showed up on Reddit from a con from oh, yeah. a few years ago. <sighs> I I wasn't. I looked at the Sam Jackson. I was like. Man, that looks a lot like Sam Jackson. Maybe I'm just a little racist. <laughs> you know, we talk about cosplay. We talked a little bit about this when we did the Comic Con podcast. But at our party, I was talking to some of the RPF guys, and they were like having real conversations about who they could be. You know, when the thought process of picking their next cosplay, right? Because like, uh, it's both of it. It's it's from a engineering of the costume standpoint. And also, who do they look like? So like, right. um, my friend like, Keith, he came up and said, oh, "Does this look covered his eyes?" Like red mist? Can you see red mist here? <laughs> Cover its face? No, it's all in the eyes. It's all in the eyes. And so it's really wow. interesting that process of, you know, when you watch a movie, you're like, I can do that. Well, it's tough. That's that's like that's one of the things that's always stopped me. Is you know, there's not a lot of dudes with beards. That and, is a trouble. That's why I haven't done a Batman cosplay, <laughs> even though Batman is one of my all time favorite superheroes. You have your I don't have the it. chin for it. Yeah. You gotta have you well, you, you know. If only we knew some Hollywood makeup people that could I, chin you up. I'm not I'm not willing to have a bunch of prosthetics done over the beard. That's just it's yeah. gonna look all weird. It's not it's not the it's not the Batman that I was looking for. Right. You can you can add beard, but you can't. Well, you know, when I grew up, Batman occasionally had a beard. That's when Alfred would put on the suit and kick some butt on Batman's <laughs> behalf. Alfred would wait, what? Oh, Alfred yeah. would have Alfred had a mustache. Yes. And yes. every now and then in the original Batman series, 1966, the 66 series, yes. um, Alfred would put on the bat suit mm -hmm. to like. And it's how they would get away with the Bruce Wayne being the same room as Batman. Like Bruce right, Wayne would get kidnapped. Right, right. And Alfred oh, would oh, have a mustache. Alfred all along. Interesting. <laughs> Just like Cesar Romero. Oh, like, my oh God. Joker with the mustache. <laughs> Joker with the mustache works, though. Okay, so we posted the, the video of you walking the floor at Comic Con. Yes. And we get a lot of feedback on videos, but usually it's all over the place. You know, there's there's people that are angry with us for something. There's people that like <laughs> on that alien, the alien suit cosplay walk, which was interesting because the other walk that you did, which will be up soon on the site. Yes. Was a I think you said one of the more comfortable walks you've ever done. Absolutely. We, we're, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. The this one was, I think, this like I was a little worried about your health. By the oh, time we got to the end of it, uh, you didn't have to be worried about my health, and uh, it, it, it's clear. It's clear. Look, I don't mean to overplay how hot it was. I mean it was dramatically hot mm -hmm. in that suit, and yeah, I was being mindful of not passing out from heat exhaustion because the, that can be really unpleasant. You'd break uh, the backpack. Yes. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, every single comment was about what sort of methods I could have used to do a cool suit. And I certainly didn't mean to cast any aspersions on the people who made the shirt that I wore mm -hmm. because it's actually, it's a brilliant design. They use the uh, polysorb super absorbent, like probably diaper crystals uh, in pockets all over the shirt, front and back. And you put it in the freezer overnight and it'll keep you cool. Now, it's like an ice pack. What's that? It's an ice it pack. It's like an ice pack, but a little bit more flexible. Um... And I did not have a freezer. 
I had a fridge. Oh, and those fridges in those hotel rooms are like 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Our fridge was actually pretty cold. We were lucky in the suite. The fridge was pretty cold, but still, there are several reasons why it didn't work. And it's not the fact that they manufactured a a substandard product. It was actually reasonable for the first few minutes. It's just, yeah, it was also very, whenever I was stationary, things were much worse. Mm. Oh, because you weren't getting any air movement at all? Any movement at all. So- uh, when people watched the video, we saw it's a vest. We wanted to describe right. it. And uh, are they designed to release like over time? Like, what's the t- standard use time for that type of? Uh, standard use shoot? time is they say about thirty minutes in the fridge and about an hour in the freezer. Oh, okay. Um, and I felt like if I had put it on, put it in the freezer, I would have been able to sustain a full hour out on the floor. I had several other solutions. Um, there is a company called Cool Shirt that makes these beautiful shirts for racing. Mm-hmm. With tubing sewn into them, and they have recirculating pumps that are too big. Um, but they also have a little freezer cans, and you psh like that. Ooh, a little boost. Now, here's the thing: I I spent a weekend day here in the shop a couple of weeks ago with the suit on, without the helmet, but with the suit on and with the cool shirt on, regularly giving myself blasts, and I concluded that I didn't think it was up to the task of keeping me cool for the whole time on a floor. Mm. And I also didn't have thumbs in the costume. It literally would have been having to have like Norm reach out and grab my <laughs> crotchal area <laughs> to spritz this cold. It wasn't going to work. Norman, Norman I need a spritz. <laughs> Blast me. Spritz me. I Blast me with the go. cool. Um. Um, <laughs> and being cool in the suits is a real concern. It is a real concern because, I mean, like I've said repeatedly, every Everything you put on as a costume is going to be hot. And when it covers your head, it's going to be twice as hot. So the one thing we didn't talk about was uh, on the video, at least, was ventilation, the circulation, not functioning for the purpose of that walk. Well, and that was just that was this the, the aliens I, I built. I, I finished two alien suits <laughs> and they both shorted out in the same exact way, which was I had, there, there are two switches on the side of the backpack that, that are in the original prop, mm-hmm. uh, big uh, Lucas electric toggle switches. They're red, red with the flippy top or no, 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 the they're black. Yeah. Got black it. toggles. And they, uh, one of them does the backpack lights and the other does the fan. And for some reason, the backpack lights worked and the helmet lights worked. And I turn on the fan, everything shorted. And, it was time to walk. We were behind schedule already. Mm-hmm. It was just, I got to take it. Well, and but you had talked about walking with the fan off so that the helmet would fog up. So you'd look like Kane yes. when he had the face hugger but on. But I could have turned the fan on and the helmet would have stayed fogged. Okay. It, with the fog, that it, with the degree to oh which it goodness. was foggy, that would have that would have helped significantly. When you took that helmet off and I stuck my hand up inside it to hold it, it felt like a swamp. In oh, there. it was crazy. Yeah. Um, oh, also, I will say... That one of the difficulties with uh, helmets fans on that degree um, is they're noisy. And when you're hot and it's hard to see and all of a sudden noise comes in, it it actually really increases the feeling of claustrophobia. Mm -hmm. I don't get claustrophobic, but it can be quite unpleasant to be in a big crowd and not feel like you can see anyone or hear them or talk to them. Because you're 20 minutes away from being back in the room. Exactly. So you need to save energy for the the walk out and the walk back. So that was, that was another thing. I I think this is a long way of saying I, I have seriously considered, uh, that a project I'd like to tackle this year is a wearable refrigeration unit. I have some ideas. <laughs> I thought you might. Um, well, it's a cool. It's similar to a, the problem of cooling a PC. Like even the amount of heat generated is like a big gaming PC takes fourteen hundred watts of power in, sends a lot of that out as waste heat. And and the neat thing about the stuff that's come out of gaming PCs is it's very compact because it has to fit inside in a lot of cases, like a little shoebox size computer case. Well, so let me just state that there were a bunch of suggestions that were excellent suggestions. I mean, pretty much almost every single suggestion in the, in the comments were things that I've thought about or tried or thrown out. Now, one of the things people said was, well, you had a backpack, you could have fit a nice cooling unit in there. That is a nice idea until you've already wired all the lights and you've got uh, other stuff coming in and the space inside the backpack isn't as big as you think. So it's not like you could take a store-bought unit and shove it in there. Further, 
when you think about a coolant recirculating system, which is what I'm talking about, using mm -hmm. the cool shirt design and actually circulating cool liquid through and using a heat dump to cool that liquid right. as it's circulating. Now, that is a watertight system, which means that you need to put on the cool shirt, feed the tubing out through the outside of the costume, and then connect it up to the backpack, which, frankly, when you're talking about doing Comic-Con, it's that amount of systemic things working through other things and having to be put on in order. It's just a layer of complication that I tend to avoid because it's a failure point. It's it's like like you said when you flip the lights on on the on the on the headlamp on the fan, all the lights turned off. Complexity, like, yeah. Complexity adding one more thing to fail. Failure. <laughs> um, however, there are you know lots of kind of fittings and stuff that you can use to plumb that in, so you could put the shirt on, connect it to the suit, all that. It's true. It's I think we can build a like waist mounted belt size thing that we can then use modularly yeah. using like because the, the other thing is we don't want to use you don't want to use like a like dry ice or some sort of something that's super cold that you can't control the temperature of right because then you can actually give yourself hypothermia which would be much worse than <laughs> overeating and frankly uh and frankly when i've used dry ice to cool down tubing systems we couldn't run water in there it freezes it too quickly mm -hmm. um you'd actually probably use alcohol and then that actually has its own concerns of a leaky alcohol system could cause vapors stuff like that um frank believes that we could do an alcohol refrigeration unit where you pressurize and do the pressure drop to get extra cooling out of the alcohol so i think that's a lot harder yeah because then you have a then you can't use low pressure tubing You're taking a peltier generally. yeah i think a peltier with just normal like like like, like that small gauge refrigerator tubing yeah, yeah hooked up to one of your your cool shirts and I think then what we can do is put a thermocouple inside the the, the loop to measure the temperature of the, the liquid. Okay. So it keeps you around, let's say, 65 or 70 And Fahrenheit. where does it dump its heat? The Peltier goes out the back. So you put a radiator on the on the hot. Your Peltier is hot end, cold right. end. It's two different materials. Um, the cold end will get really, really cool if you apply enough power to it. The hot, all the heat goes out that hot end. Okay. And you just smack a radiator and a, and a, and a like a, P, a five volt PC fan on that. I will say I got um, some advice from from Nathan Fillion, of all huh. people. Okay. When we uh, we did, Jamie and I uh, appeared uh, as mystery guests on the Nerd HQ Mystery Panel at Petco Park, and that was really fun. Hold on. Can you explain how that worked? Uh, so Nerd HQ runs a parallel Shadow Comic Con. Really? <laughs> they really do. Dark Comic Con. They set up at Petco Park, and Zach Levy just brought in a string of panels uh, wow. Over there for a, a small audience, all to raise money for his charity, the Smile Foundation. Uh, and, you know, Zach knows everybody, and it was a fantastic, fantastic experience. Um, simply because it's like you're there with um, a bunch of really, really good really good chops, comedians, uh, improvisers like Nathan, uh, Brecken Meyer, Colin Ferguson from Eureka, uh, Tampson from uh, uh, SNL, mm -hmm. Sloppy Swish guy. Mm -hmm. uh, and it just like was nonstop hilarity. Uh, so uh, waiting outside that, I uh, was talking to Nathan and he said that uh, he uses ice packs Right at the base of his back huh. and keeps him cool in the suits when he's like running around on the hot sets. Well, so just, just duct tape and ice pack. Yeah. And oh. then, you know, right there at the base of your spine. Mm. Well, I, look, I think anything would have helped yeah. me in that in that. Yeah. Suit. I mean, one of the other things that people mentioned that's come up a lot is the army did a ton of research when we were fighting two wars in deserts where it's 120 degrees yes. about the fastest way to dump heat from a body. And palm of your hand has a ton of blood flow and they were putting coolers, yeah. chill pl chillers on the palms of your hand. Yes. Which was enough to do it. It's like well, feet, it actually turns. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, it's like feet, hands, you know, you know. Yeah, you go camping, head, you know, yeah. yeah, top of the head. Oh, yeah. I, and uh, back when I lived on a fifth floor walk up in Brooklyn on hot New York summer nights where it's like 95 and 90 percent humidity. Mm -hmm. uh, a few times, one of the tricks for falling asleep was put a little rubbing alcohol in the palms of your hand and the soles <laughs> of your feet and lie down. And the heat that pulled from your body is long enough for you to collapse and fall asleep. Wow. <laughs> but um, I did read a study recently uh, in the last year or so where scientists were like dogs cooled down by opening their mouths and sticking their tongue out. Their tongue is a heat exchange. Mm -hmm. uh, and 
uh, it's well established that humans' lack of body hair is and our ability to wear clothing and adjust our body temperature really dramatically is one of the things that allowed us to populate every climate there is. Uh, and that furred animals do not have that luxury, so they really need a heat exchange. But from a, a evolutionary standpoint, they thought humans should, ha where would humans heat exchange be? And it turns out, you're right, it's the palms of the hands. And they've actually come up with, a, it's not specific, like cooling your hands is one thing, but it can also, cooling too rapidly can make the blood vessels uh, we give constrict. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So apparently the, the, the method that works, if I remember correctly, is the hands under the slightest vacuum, a slight amount of negative pressure really? with cool water running through them. And- it's like it has real implications for hypothermia patients uh, and for people who are overheating that you can adjust the body temperature very rapidly using mm. this method. And in a controlled manner. Maybe yeah. we need to put the thermocouple on you <laughs> and not in the <laughs> water loop. Just strap it to the center right. of my chest. So I think that we should build this as a, I, I want to build this as a tested project and then put back on the alien suit and go running around and see how it works. We can try. I mean, the neat thing is if we do it over the course of the year, I'm sure you'll have another spacesuit to wear at some point in the future. Yeah. And you want something that's interchangeable with, you know, chewy and yeah, 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 absolutely. And 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 now I got to start figuring out what to wear for next year's Comic Con. Oh, <laughs> okay. any hints? I really, I have, I there's a couple things I've got on the burner. Uh, whether they work for next year's Comic Con or not, I'm not positive. Um, but let's see. There's two things right on the burner up front, but there's also uh, there's also a couple of longer dormant projects that have been sitting off to the side that I haven't gotten to. Um, but then there's also like, what's the overall theme? You know, what do I want to do? Mm -hmm. I, I I feel like this year's Comic Con was so successful. It's not like I want to top it, but I want to try something different. You know. Um, I want to point out, uh, 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 there's a comment that I, that came across Twitter a few days ago, uh, and it's, it bears just repeating. Um, I mentioned in one of the interviews that Comic-Con is, is such a great space for cosplay in a safe environment. Now, somebody pointed out that I said that as a man. Yeah, as a, yeah. as a middle-aged white male. As a middle-aged white yeah. male. Uh, so I have the privilege of feeling safe all over the place. Uh, and it's not so cut and dry for the women and, who dress up and go to places like Comic Con. And actually, there were some incidents this yeah. year. Yeah, yeah. And you know, there was the there was the hashtag campaign. Um, cosplay does not equal consent mm -hmm. um, because women put on costumes that are uh, that they look attractive in, and people feel like somehow because it's Comic Con, I don't know that they can go and harass them. Right, and that is. It's absolutely something that I agree with. Yes, that is a total problem. And it's, 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 I'm not sure how to address that from a, my going cosplaying, but I'd like to figure out a way to draw attention to that because it should feel safe for everybody for mm -hmm. Christ's sake. So, yeah. so, and, and I mean, the cosplay does not equal consent thing. This is something I didn't, it's on the outside. You, I didn't understand. Like but when Norm started taking pictures uh, for the cosplay galleries at Comic-Con, I walked around with him the first time. I was like, hey, why are you asking everybody to take a picture? And he said, look, A, it's polite. B, they're going to give you a much better pose if you ask for a picture. And totally. C, just because you're in a costume doesn't mean if you're eating a hot dog on the side of the thing, you, mm -hmm. you want to have your picture taken at that moment. And it doesn't help. I love Jimmy Kimmel, but it doesn't help when Kimmel sends oh, a producer gosh. down there to ask all these women, have you had sex in your costume? Yeah. That was such a dick move. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I know. And it's like, oh, man, you are so not helping the situation. Yeah, it's it's Um, I mean, one of the things So my wife used to do events for, for a long time. And and one of the things that they were always aware of is that just the the incidents of violent crime against women at big gatherings, whether it's Comic Con cons pharmaceutical trade shows yeah. any place where a bunch of people come to get get together and like the societal norms shift even the slightest bit you know if it's if it's yeah i'm at the the sales meeting and yeah. everybody goes out and gets loaded as soon as the thing closes like that that is a real thing that happens in almost universally and it's something that that has to be addressed yeah so when, when people talk about things like harassment policies at comic-con and dragon con and packs and those types of cons it's not about it's about serious stuff. It is about absolutely serious stuff. And 
there is, you know, this isn't anecdotal, right? So it's like people will put up comments and it's not like I've seen them on tested, but you'll see them around, around, around online of like, well, I've never seen it happen. It's like, that's, that's There's not 120,000 people. At it's not, the, it's not yeah. the point what you've seen. Oh, no one's ever told me that that's happened. That's still not the point. Oh, yeah. what's happened. The point is that if people are putting on costumes, which is a great thing, and they're feeling good about themselves and they're going out to a place where they want to have a good time and they're made to feel threatened or unsafe. That is fucked up and it's not okay. It, it, if you look at they're it, wearing costumes or not. Yes. Oh, a hundred percent. Oh yeah. yeah. No, totally. I was going to say, I'm just thinking that the costume part makes you extra vulnerable. Yeah. Frankly, but I think it happens at Comic-Con, you know, for just normal people. I mean, when I say safe, I mean, like when I think about going to, you know, going to grade school in a costume on Halloween, there's no one walking around cost Comic-Con going, you look like an idiot. Yeah. Like, and that's great that no one's doing that, but we need to go farther. <laughs> yeah. We, we, the violent stuff is worse than the being uh, yeah, called an idiot. Freaking, it turns out. Yeah. Um, um, anyway, I just wanted to say, I agreed with that, with that Twitter comment. And it is an issue that absolutely should be addressed and should be more forefronted. Okay. Um, think- so we talked about staying cool on the floor under multiple conditions. Oh, oh, oh there, we go. there we go. I brought it all back around. It's good. It's a good wraparound. <laughs> Any final Comic Con thoughts before we close this? The last time we'll talk about Comic Con for at least another like ten months. Ten months. I will say that the I love the culture of Comic Con. I learn. I get I get credit in the press for being sort of like you know, there's a lot of articles that are like Adam Savage is the ultimate Comic Con cosplayer. It's so not the case. I am still a dilettante when it comes to a lot of this stuff. P- P- there are people, just to be clear, who go out in costume and go to the con. Yeah, like you hit the not. I, I hit don't the want to floor for like, half an for hour. half an hour. These guys do it. These guys and girls do it for hours every day. And it is a deep commitment, and they spend like you know. I'm lucky that I can afford to do some of these really cool things. Some of these people spend absolutely hard earned cash in hundreds of thousands of hours to do this, and I learn more about that culture every time I go. And that's my goal: is to feel is to connect with the culture, not impose my marketing on it or try to, you know, figure it out. It is to be a part of it. And this year, more than any other, uh, I felt a deepening of my connection, of our connection with that culture at the at the incognito party. Um, what people kept saying when they came up was uh, they love the builds on Tested. They love the stuff that we're doing, that we're talking about, both from a, a construction and practical standpoint, but also a cultural and personal uh, inspiration standpoint. Even like motivation and stuff motivation like that. Motivation and yeah. stuff like that. Um, you know, I, one of the things I love... Uh, one of the things I love, love, love about Comic Con is also, I hate to say this, hate to say it this way, but it makes sense. The terrible costumes. Like, there are some people walking around wearing just like normal clothes and board shorts and just a, a Iron Man mask. And they can, that's Robert Downey they Jr. Can, <laughs> well, right. But the thing, I, yes, exactly. <laughs> the thing I love about that is, they're participating. I don't yeah. care how bad the costume is at all. There's some people who are walking around with stuff up close. It's all paper mache and duct tape. That's and great. Still fantastic. I mean, that guy spent as much time on his paper mache and duct tape costume. And in a way, it communicates a need even more because it's like, yeah, I want to try this. Mm-hmm. And I g- agree. Yeah, you want to try this. I mean, and just to be clear, if you want to start doing this, the way to do it isn't to spend 10 years no. on a cane suit. No. You, do, you go sp- spend a, as little money. Money and time as you feel is right. Yeah. And then then go walk. See if it sticks. And it may be that you got out there and you don't like it at all. And out there on, on eBay and on Etsy and uh, a lot of other places, there are great costumes you can get made. You can take stuff that uh, that's cheaply made, buy some slightly better fabric and pay your uh, pay a seamstress to make it. It's not that exp- my V shirt, mm-hmm. uh, my V from Vendetta costume. Right. Um, everyone has a very difficult time with that costume, finding the fabric. Um, I found a fabric that was very close. It was expensive. The fabric was expensive, like something like 75 bucks a yard. It was wow. wow. But I bought a doublet for a V costume online for like 30 bucks mm-hmm. that fit me really nicely, especially when I pinned it to fit me exactly. I took that to the person that does my uh, my alterations and they rebuilt the doublet I had with the fabric I had for mm-hmm. like $100. Right. right. I mean, right? that, that's amazing. It was beautiful. So the threshold for getting quality stuff is not that high. Well, and 
there's a way in which I felt connected, like I said, to that culture on a deeper level this year that made it twice as pleasant. St- stuff like your no face costume. I mean, your no face <laughs> costume, the the vacuum former is probably a. I mean, but it's even a fairly good vacuum former. If you have an old vacuum cleaner that doesn't work anymore, is a Saturday afternoon and a hundred bucks all in probably to get, to get uh, well, something I mean, to that and size. You can do that face under a bunch of different circumstances. Right. There was a beautiful paper mache no face walking around Comic Con this year. Uh, that was that was almost as tall, and I just I love I love seeing the no faces. It's a it's a good never take the coins. One. What's that? Never take the coins. Never, don't take the coins. Don't take the coins. <laughs> Give it back. Give it back. Um. So that's my that's my last thoughts on Comic Con. Just the, that the culture. The, I tell you, two years ago, maybe even three, but definitely two years ago, the culture at Comic Con clearly felt over marketed too, and there's been a pullback from the studios of that fervent, feverish hyper marketing that was going hashtag on. This, hashtag that. Yeah. 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 Um, cheese and yeah. it's I mean it's still there's still a huge amount of saturation marketing, but I think the culture felt a little bit the, the overall Comic Con felt a little bit less we are marketing at you and a little more like this is our thing. Well and and this year, I mean I know Superman versus Batman's coming but it seemed like when you walked around the big studio booths, it was less, hey, here's what this year's movie is going to be amazing. And here's some stuff that we think you you guys think will think is awesome that we the pulled Batman from the vaults. Booth was crazy. Oh, my God. It was amazing. The amount of reference material there for cosplayers <sighs> with all the bat suits and all the beautiful custom done art bat suits mm-hmm. and the uh, Joker masks was, that was insane. I took. A couple hundred photos of all that. Well, stuff. Marvel had good. I mean, they had stuff from Guardians of the Galaxy, but they had other good stuff as well. I mean, it was it was yeah. a good oh walk you know around and look at stuff on the floor here. We haven't revealed my final cosplay. Oh, which was my casual walk around on Saturday. So you should well, explain this after we did yeah. the podcast on Saturday. I went and spent about three hours out on the floor by myself. Uh, actually, my kids came with me. Uh, thing one and thing two were um, working for us at this year's Comic-Con. They were very helpful. Um, but I wanted to really get the feel of the whole floor. So I spent about three hours on the floor. Which you do pretty much every year. I do. Yeah. Uh, and this year I did it in my chrome Daft Punk helmet, my mm-hmm. Thomas Thomas helmet. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it was great. Did you I, wear the gloves? I did not wear the gloves. Okay. Probably best. <laughs> it was a buyer. It was a, a maker on Etsy who makes them out of South America. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was very, an incredibly comfortable mask. And uh, it allowed me to walk in normal clothes, uh, unmolested and unnoticed yeah. for a good uh, several hours. Helmets like like Rocketeer. Rocketeer. Really casual perfect. Rocketeer yeah. was my helmet a couple of years ago. You need to add casual. It's, you know, casual Stormtrooper, <laughs> casual, right. casual Stormtrooper. Boba Fett. No, it leads to Swinger Boba Fett, but you don't want to do it. <laughs> Well, the, I don't want to know about yeah. Swinger, Boba Swinger Boba Fett and, and Darth Vader, Vader we saw this yeah. year. That's always, I always see them. They're always walking around. Um, oh, yes. I took pictures of those yes. guys. Yes. Those guys yes. were on exactly. the really it's, it's a slope. When they took the helmets off and they had the. Awesome oh, I didn't hit. see the helmets off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, oh, was good. they're very funny. Very funny. Um, yeah, it's like the, the walk around costume is good. I always assume anybody that's in a walk around looking costume with just like normal, normalish clothes and a mask, but a pretty good mask. Moderately good. Maybe not too good. <laughs> I always assume that's Robert Downey Jr. or Kevin Smith if they're if they're I heard my that, size. I have heard bigger. Hayden Christensen also did it that way. Okay, Daniel, uh, Daniel Radcliffe was a Spider Man, I think. Donnie, around. Donnie, uh, 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 wait, what's his name? Uh, Johnny Depp apparently walked one year in a bad Jack Sparrow costume. Oh, I could totally like see that. Like a Ruby's Jack Sparrow. Costume. That's perfect. <laughs> the Brian Cranston wearing the Brian. Yeah, Cranston. Brian wearing the Brian yeah. Cranston mask. Oh, I want one of those masks. Can't afford it. It's it's crazy expensive. Okay, I mean it's worth it because it's a beautiful thing oh, yeah. that they do. But uh, that's just sorry. I it's something they can't afford it. It's just not worth that much. I'm just ha- I was asking what it is. I don't know. Oh, it's the it's a it's a silicone Brian Cranston mask that is hyper realistic. They, they cast his face. No, it's okay. a sculpt, but sculpt, it's a really. beautiful it's like sculpt. A little bit larger than his head, but it was of Breaking Bad Brian Cranston. Okay, and the guy had hair. The guy that makes it is a friend of Frank Capolito. Oh, Immortal okay. Mass made it. Like everybody is a friend yeah. of. Frank yeah, Capolito. of course. This, this is the, when you're walking around Comic Con with Frank, then it's just like, yeah, yeah. Did we drift for another 15 minutes yeah, after talking about last thoughts? It's probably best. People don't mind. Um, I, I call out the um, the badass chick stormtrooper troop that was walking the con. Oh, I didn't see without them. the helmets mm-hmm. on. They were just they looked fantastic, and you, it was they, just, they were in your gallery, right? Yeah, yeah. And it was just like we're badass. That was that seemed to be the the main theme. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's um, good. The gallery, man. I lost like. 
two and a half wow. hours to that gallery. <laughs> click, 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 click. There's a thumbnail view in the top left. The 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 freaking um dwarf on barrels. Oh, oh it was God, so that. good. <laughs> that was just insane. What was it? Is that is that from something? I just don't know. Lord, I think Lord of the Rings. Oh, okay. Or or The Hobbit, rather. Or Hobbit, yeah. Um What's the, the Hobbit? <laughs> You know, it's it's like that fourth Indiana Jones movie. Um, I don't know what you think about uh, what. There's more than two Indiana. There's more than one Indiana Jones film. Oh, 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 yeah. Poor short round. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a good show. On that note, yeah, we'll Comic Con, what an extravaganza. We'll be back next we'll year. Be I back guess. next week talking about some regular old costumes. I do have a. Um, I, I think shortly we'll talk about another, the longest unfinished project on my bench is being finished this week. The, oh my goodness. This, this, uh, so <laughs> don't reveal too much. Next week. We'll next talk week. about this next we'll week. We'll talk okay. about this next, next week. week. It's May, totally well, incredible. Or maybe not. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe it'll be the week oh after. Oh my gosh. Will, why do you tease us? Bye guys. Bye guys. Bye.